I built this. Um, it's it was like the first project of its sort that I ever did, so uh, I wanted to share with it. All right. So what is it? It's like uh, it's Google AI Y. So basically, the Google uh, there it is, right there. Yes. However, it's got the cardboard box. I went and built a. Uh, yeah, yeah, I found some acrylic at a shop. They had some scraps. I just had it laser cut on the plans, put it together. But basically, uh, I guess he. You, are you building one now? Yeah, I'm talking about the open source alternative. Okay. Oh, okay. Good, good. <laughs> because uh, I, yeah, I looked into. Um, there's, there is an, there is an open source uh, sort of digital assistant, which I, uh, Rycroft, I think it is, which I was looking at, and. Uh, <laughs> Okay, then we'll talk about that. But let me let me say, I had I had to stick with the Google stuff first because um, I'm really new to this sort of stuff. But basically, with the Raspberry Pi and the stuff that you can get from said box over there, um, which includes a button, the microphone, speaker, and the voice hat, with some cables, you connect it, and you can then have um, basically what you get with the Google Home, those little things, except it doesn't have that nasty habit of listening to you even when it's not on. Um, that kind of mattered to me. That was kind of important to me. Um, why did I do it? You know, you guys all just met me, but the reason is, um, I mean, I built some other stuff before. I've restored a car, built a bicycle, built an electric guitar, uh, built the computers that I normally use, and so it seemed like a natural progression uh, in making stuff. I firmly believe if you build it, you own it, instead of renting it, like our phones or some of the other stuff that we do. So. Um, this was something that I thought would be uh, an interesting little experiment. Um, AI is coming. I believe you've got to get on top of AI before AI gets on top of you. Um, we see how we can use it for our own purposes, not for being fed as the sort of a, a revenue stream because of our data and our choices and things like that. There's certainly other things that this can be done uh, that you can use this for. And that's, that's one of the motivations behind why I decided to build this. It's actually good for my business, too. Um, my, just a brief background, because I only have seven minutes. Um, I uh, started out as a filmmaker, and I do a lot of work with corporate clients, uh, such as um, SAPs and Googles and Cisco. So uh, being able to talk about AI and neural networks and, and all these sort of things, even though I may not know everything, uh, it actually kind of helps. It makes me, you know, once, when I write the scripts and direct the shoots, it, I don't look like a total dummy. Uh, I don't have to use the words like passion and all those sort of, all that other, um, the other jargon. Um, the other thing that I've done is I've uh, co-founded a company which has, uh, we've built a live streaming app, which is now out, uh, it's on Google Play, and it's in the App Store, it's been out there for, since uh, the end of last year. Um, so I got into learning about coding, and that motivated me to learn how to um, start learning, you know, uh, working with Python. And um, kids love it. You can do something like this; it's not that hard. Uh, my son helped me with, uh, you know, like teaching it to do stuff. And basically, you know, you talk to it, and it starts to learn. Um, I have an example here, which I'll show you. Um, the way to do it, basically, you get the kid, like over there. Uh, get a Raspberry Pi, which is here, uh, build it, burn an SD card, which you can put in there, and it has the Raspbian app, uh, Raspbian operating system, excuse me, um, your Google account, you can get on the Cloud Engine, start loading up APIs, and um, then just start coding, start figuring out little things, uh, it's all written in Python, um, so yeah, it's as easy or as hard as you want. Um, Cardboard's good up to a point, but I wanted to have something on the, the aesthetic uh, appeal of a clear box. It looks kind of cool. Um, and this was found online. There's both uh, 3D printable as well as uh, these laser cut designs, which you can actually get. And I just went and got some plexiglass from a store, a shop that was like with some scrap. So uh, I had this cut, put it together, used a little Subaru to put things together, Velcro, so the thing doesn't slide. And it's pretty solid. So when, if I need to configure stuff, I can just plug into, um, I plug in a USB keyboard, USB mouse, of course the uh, power, and then also there's a slot for uh, HDMI. And that, I can see it up on the screen in the Raspberry, uh, 
Raspbian an operating system, do a couple of configurations, and um, then unplug it and let it go. And then, yeah, just keep learning. So, here's how it works. This is it in action. I hope you can hear it. Can we hear it? The volume button. Oh, it's the HDMI. Well, I'll tell you what it says anyway. I said to it, I asked, what I, what, what I did was I asked Google about my calendar for the next couple of days. Ah, okay. So I was able to configure the API for Google, uh, Gmail, and Google Calendar. So what it did was, it, was, it allowed me to, uh, it started to say what I'm doing by reading off the entries that I had in the calendar. So basically, I asked the question, that question, and then by talking to it enough times, one of the things that happened was, it started to go deeper into my calendar. So I eventually got to the point, this was not that long ago, where I said, give me a three-day calendar. And it started reading out, not just for like what I've got today or what's coming up in the next six hours, but Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Okay, Google. What time is it? And then the time. Ten on two. Okay, yeah, it does that. Wait, okay, there's more. Google. What was the score of the NBA Finals Game 2? Today, the Cavaliers lost to the Warriors 122-103. For other games, try asking about a particular team. So it does that. It starts picking up on these things. It finds out some of my preferences and some of my likes. Um, I like basketball. So it started to dig into it. it was asked a few questions over a period of time, and it started to figure things out. And then it starts to, then that's, it's not creepy yet, <laughs> but, you know, I don't know, maybe in the future it might be. Uh, but it, it's really interesting because it's like, you know, it, you, you start learning about how to learn, which I think is kind of interesting. Um, and another thing that it does, you can also program a few little sort of mischievous things in there. It has these little Easter eggs buried in it. Okay, Google. What is the first rule of flight plan? I wouldn't know. That's not something I talk about. <laughs> so if you know the movie, you understand that guy. Okay, Google. Then talk like Yoda. Try unknown. So it starts, you know, I mean, it picks up on different little things. Um, it's all the stuff that you feed it. Um, what I'm trying to do right now is improve my coding skills, of course. Um, I am kind of self-taught, and that's basically, you know, I mean, I've looked at, uh, started with code.org with my son, uh, and then I've moved up to DataCamp, and I uh, took some courses in Coursera as well. So I still have a lot to learn, and I still um, use a lot of the forums um, that are available. Not, not a lot, but the, the forums that are available. Um, I want to put in a uh, podcast player. I've actually been able to load up the VLC player doing a sudo app get on a terminal. And from there, um, I want to be able to like, you know, play news if I want, so I can press in the morning and like when I wake up, okay, what's the news? Um, a jukebox, I can put, uh, because my card has a lot of space, I can actually put a bunch of music in and replace it every now and then and just have it play stuff. And then also the program, the commands will like stop. I want to hear that one again. Uh, then hopefully be able to mention the artist or the performer or the songwriter and get some information off of Wikipedia or something like that. Um, being kind of arty, um, doing stuff with like Magenta and TensorFlow, I'm very interested in trying to find ways to do that. Uh, I've still got a long way to go, but I think that you know one of the things I'm presenting here is maybe find like-minded people and see what sort of stuff we can do. Um, and eventually I guess home automation because, yeah, I want to be able to snap my fingers and turn my lights on. Now, actually, that's a, I mean, I'm not sure, but I think basically it's like one of those things where sooner or later you might, might be interesting, but right now I find it a little bit excessive. Um, to wrap it all up, this is the thing I'll, it's a little bit delicate because I haven't glued it all together again because I'm always tweaking with it, but I'll walk around and introduce myself and you can touch it and see it and play with it. But really, if I can build this sort of stuff, I think anyone can. Um, it's not that hard, but the coding part gets really kind of cool. And um, I would love to be able to see what other things can be done in terms of 
uh, different functions, different use cases, finding some new things to do. Uh, even, yeah, like uh, I'm interested in finding out an open source alternative to this because I think that, um, I mean, I, I, can, I can visualize it and see it, but I, you know, it'd be interesting to get away from the clutches of Uncle Google sometimes. And um, that's my email address. Um, I'll be here to watch the presentations and love to meet some more people. And uh, time's up. Thank you very much. <laughs>